Salamat malam Indonesia from the Philippines. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, terrorism has been the biggest problem in Southeast Asia. To help us understand this threat and offer us counter-terrorism measures and policy making, let us all welcome Dr. Badu Shole, Associate Professor of International Relations at the Sharif Hidayatullah State Islamic University and one of Indonesia's terrorism expert. Good evening, uh, Professor Badrus. Good evening, Chester. Yes. Yeah. How are you? I'm no see my good friend. Yes. Okay, now, uh, let's, uh, nice begin to meet our, you. Right, right. Let's begin with our interview. Um, ASEAN will turn 53 years old this year, uh, this year, while Southeast Asia has been the home of indigenous Islamic militant groups for decades, questioning uh, socio-economic marginalization, political corruption, losing political controls and ignorance towards the uh, insurgence of militant groups that has created a time bomb for the region. Aside from these predicaments, how come Southeast Asia has remained the hotbed of terrorism? Yeah, I think it is, uh, uh, Southeast Asia is a home of uh, some insurgents since the uh, early period of revolution uh, during the colonial period. I think we should uh, we remind our, our history on how some uh, insurgents come from uh, former paramilitia. I think uh, the, the growth of a uh, terrorist group affiliated to Al-Qaeda, Jamaisonia, or Islamic State, uh, their origins come from the the family or the graduates of education from the from the affiliation of the Islamic State during the history of 1940s of uh, history in an Eastern uh, Muslim incidents. So I think it is a home of uh, some uh, in some uh, extremist groups and it is still growing after some conflicts happen not only in Southeast Asia but also in the East and conflict is become the reason of their growth uh, in this region. Right, right. Okay, can you, can you, can we uh, blame colonialism? Why terrorism existed in Southeast Asia? I think we cannot blame uh, colonialism, but uh, we should uh, acknowledge that the history of colonialism, uh, the origins of the growth of uh, insurgents in Southeast Asia. And insurgents uh, based on uh, in the, in this context uh, based on the Muslims. So I think uh, we should consider that. But the most important here is uh, the current uh, the current challenge in in Southeast Asia, where, where more than one thousand foreign fighters supporting Islamic State come from Southeast Asia, and at least six hundred of them uh, come from Indonesia. So that's the most important uh, challenge of, for us in uh, regional uh, security threat when they return from Syria uh, mm. from uh, 2015. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, some analysts would say that because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, nation states will become inward looking uh, to perhaps repair their economies for short and medium terms. Although it may not be the same for non-state actors like terrorists and extremists, who may have yeah. re recruited during the pandemic to recharge its uh, capability and strength, particularly on recruitment and operational planning. And the national governments are still focused on health and economic securities of the states. Do you think that there is a lack of regional cooperation and counterterrorism measures and counter violent extremism in the region? I think it is uh, normal when a state a weak uh, then then uh, non-state actors who fight against state, uh, they are stronger. Uh, so this is uh, the most important uh, challenge for us how to strengthen our cooperation in Southeast Asia. Because uh, during the, after the pandemic, uh, since, early, since uh, January 2020, I think uh, Islamic states, global Islamic states already uh, try to uh, develop their own uh, capacity, not only in Middle East, Africa, but also in Southeast Asia. They mm. actively uh, recruit uh, new members uh, during join the training on the 
in uh, Sulu, Southern Philippines, but also in Poso, Central Sulawesi. Uh, they 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 uh, uh, have a campaign uh, that joining uh, recruitment and uh, in, uh, strengthening capacity building for Islamic State will make them stronger. And this is the chance for for the member of Islamic State to be stronger, especially after uh, most state members in Southeast Asia they focus on. Uh, Pandemic, COVID nineteen pandemic. So right, right. Uh, that's that's uh, the most important note, and I think we should consider uh, that uh, this, uh, including this uh, early this uh, early June, already uh, attack to the police in Kalimantan, uh, to the mm -hmm. police station, and one police uh, killed uh, by the by the ISIS uh, member, and this is they state. Uh, it's including published in in uh, Anaba and Alamak, the official uh, official uh, media of ISIS, that uh, this is only starting starting a uh, fight I, global ISIS toward uh, states who who try to fight against ISIS, not only in Southeast Asia but also in Middle East and Africa. So right. that's that's uh, the point uh, for the COVID nineteen. But, but, but why these regions like Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and uh, you said Africa, um, uh, maybe because of the reasons that these are vulnerable regions because of uh, high poverty, unemployment, and uh, some other reasons? Yes, uh, we, should, we should know that uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, make a problem for economy. I think uh, the rise of uh, unemployment, not only in Southeast Asia but also in in many uh, countries. So that's that's uh, in the in the narrative of uh, ISIS uh, in social media. They say that this is due to the uh, great powers who, including China uh, and and uh, uh, United States, that because of them. The the pandemic spread all over the world mm, mm. because but, of but, them. But before the, uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic, Muslims uh, have problem because of the, the pandemic. Well, yes. but before the COVID nineteen pandemic, terrorism was also a pandemic. It uh, damaged a lot of uh, countries and uh, regions and the world uh, basically. So. Um, uh, and Europe became one of the um, um, targets before. How come uh, Europe was able to counter terrorism? I think the, because uh, many people, especially who uh, since uh, ISIS declared in 2014, most people join ISIS in Syria come from Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very attractive uh, area for people from Europe join ISIS and the returnees, there are thousand returnees from Syria uh, returned to Europe. And, and uh, I think uh, that's the real uh, threat for Europe, uh, fight against ISIS. And, and the, the problem here is uh, returnees, returnees uh, a threat uh, from, to the awful hour because after uh, Abu al-Baghdadi killed, mm. uh, they try to fight to to make a, like they call it a home terrorism attack. The home uh, terrorism attack. Yeah, home terrorism attack. And, and it is uh, already that's uh, a terrorist attack rising, not only in Middle East, but also in Southeast Asia. And, right. and it is important to see that uh, they continue the road in Southeast Asia context. They continue the road of uh, Jema Islamiyah uh, from from the from from for example from Kalimantan. I went to North uh, Kalimantan a few years ago, and I saw it was it is a very easy way from people from Indonesia to go to Sulu from mm -hmm. Kalimantan from North Kalimantan. Right. And right. the the lack of security cooperation between Malaysia, Indonesia, and Philippines in the border uh, make uh, easy for them to. Uh, to help 
uh, especially to strengthen each other or to join training in in uh, Sulu by Abu Sayyaf and it, it's it's proof that Indonesian already contribute for some attack in in uh, southern Philippines right right uh, before um, asking you questions because you mentioned already some of the Syrian uh, returnees rising in the region maybe I'll just uh, pick up your story about the um, link uh, of Sulu and the Kalimantan Bur. Uh, there were pieces of evidence that present Indonesian ISIS took a role uh, as suicide bombers in the Church of Allah in southern Philippines last year. And the uh, Philippine President Duterte will uh, soon sign the broader anti-terrorism law from uh, uh, from the toothless of the uh, Human Security Act of 2007. Do you think this amended anti-terror law in the Philippines will strengthen the regional security Uh, in ASEAN against terrorists and violent extremists? Yeah, I think so. anti-terrorism law uh, uh, try to uh, strengthen the, the capacity, uh, especially in the military aspects. Mm. Uh, but again, uh, it is not enough. Uh, anti-terrorism law, uh, yes, they can uh, uh, manage terrorism in uh, Uh, in their home country, but mm. in the border, I think uh, there are there are no not enough cooperation among states in Southeast Asia. There is no like like umbrella, like uh, what is uh, umbrella among states in Southeast Asia? How to coordinate among them to fight against uh, in terms of in in terms of political coordination? Uh, so. It is easy for Indonesian fighters because joining training in Sulu, coordinated by Abu Sayyaf, uh, by Jamaan Saludaula from Indonesia, it's attractive. They they can raise their rank uh, among this combatant by joining the training in in Sulu, and that's that's uh, the the easy road from from Kalimantan from Sabah to to uh, Sulu area. Uh, it's still a gap. There is no cooperation in the border be, uh, between uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Philippines. Yes, uh, there is uh, during the the kidnapping, the kidnapping of Abu Sayyaf. Uh, there is short-term cooperation, but it is not sustainable cooperation. We need sustainable cooperation because uh, terrorists are growing very fastly. Uh, they not only develop their capacity militarily, but also they develop. Their capacity, their capacity in in education, their capacity in economy, their capacity in uh, social development. So mm -hmm. that's that's uh, the, the problem with anti-terrorism law, not only in Philippines but also in Indonesia, is they could not they could not uh, arrest people just in Indonesian context. They could right. not arrest people just because of, uh, uh, for example, Muslim. Try to to spread hatred. Try to uh, make uh, uh, hate speech. Try to uh, recruit people uh, from religious meeting, hmm. or try to develop uh, extremist uh, curriculum in in schools. Uh, so that's that's the gap in inside the anti-terrorism law itself because uh, terrorism law should also consider uh, human rights, should also consider democ democracy. Right. So that's the challenge for us, how to, uh, how to balance and, uh, the, the terrorism law. But it is important to, to, to note that uh, law is not enough. Uh, we should have strong co cooperation, strong coordination, not only uh, interstate in Southeast Asia, but also uh, I think we have very weak cooperation among uh, ASEAN community on counterterrorism or preventing terrorism. There is not enough uh, narrative, counter-narrative against uh, extremism and again extremist group or again terrorist group by uh, ASEAN community groups in Southeast Asia. Uh, not yeah. only in Indonesia but also in Southeast Asia. I think, I think uh, my note here is it is important for for a government like in the Philippines uh, to have cooperation with uh, moderate mainstream Muslim organization actively uh, to fight 
and to uh, counter uh, preventing terrorism and extremism. Right, right. You made mention about the um, um, Syrian returnees. Um, can you expand about uh, this uh, Indonesia's policy experience in countering uh, and preventing terrorism after the Syrian returnees rising in the region? Yes. Uh, there are already uh, more than 400 Syrian returnees in Indonesia. And uh, we have, I, I talked to uh, ministries of uh, who uh, coordinate on, on uh, returnees. Uh, we, we have like screening or rehabilitation process among returnees. Uh, many of them uh, are, are women and children. Right. So right. we could not arrest uh, women and children, and including we couldn't arrest people who not join uh, combat in Syria. Many of them, they, they are in the border of, of Turkey. But the problem here is uh, when we return them to, to their uh, homes, to their province or their villages, uh, they have nothing. They already sell their homes. They already sell... Uh, uh, their resources, their wealth, uh, to uh, to go to Syria in in Iraq, and that's the problem. Secondly, uh, local government or local community they could not help financially. They could not help. They could not assist them uh, to integrate to the society. Mm -hmm. So the the threat is because there is not enough integration. So ISIS uh, uh, try to recruit them again. Hmm. ISIS try to approach them again, and it's successfully. Many of them they join ISIS and they develop their social community and including economic community hmm. to support ISIS community. Right, right, and um, um, perhaps um, what are the counterterrorism measures and policy making? <laughs> that you want to address and advocate by achieving safe and secure, stronger and prosperous ASEAN against all these non-traditional threats like terrorism and violent extremism in the region? Uh, pardon me, uh, sir? I mean, um, um, I'm asking about uh, what are your advocacies to achieve safe and secure, stronger, prosperous uh, ASEAN against these non-traditional threats? What are the uh, advanced policy making that uh, ASEAN countries should be doing? Yeah, I think uh, ASEAN countries uh, should uh, make a consistent, uh, sustainable, and balanced uh, policy for counterterrorism. Not only uh, maintaining active cooperation among military forces, not only active uh, among ministries of foreign affairs and uh, defense in right. Southeast Asia. Uh, but also, uh, uh, they should involve uh, civil society more. Mm. I think civil society have, uh, have uh, they are they are actually the one who uh, fight against uh, ISIS. They are the one who uh, uh, the 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 object the, the most vulnerable object against ISIS because um, they live with them. Uh, so there is there is another theory. I don't know whether we can do that or not. But but it's already uh, acknowledged in in United Nations that whether we are ready to leave uh, to 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 stay in the same table with ISIS, to talk to them, to have dialogue, to have communication, whether we are ready uh, to stay together. Uh, as, as our neighbors, the ISIS, uh, uh, and that's that's another problem, mm -hmm. because in in our law, I think we we could not uh, arrest them just because of they join ISIS, mm -hmm. uh, in in Indonesian context. Yeah. But what the one I think including in the Philippines, but the one we could arrest is the one uh, who uh, try to manage uh, attack or join uh, attack uh, planning. Uh, so. So a balanced active cooperation among states, military, police, military are important. Again, uh, uh, we have problem also in Indonesia. Mm. Uh, we try to make, uh, to uh, produce a blueprint of uh, ter terrorism in Indonesia. 
Mm. It's already uh, more than three years, I think, uh, the plan. When but, you see a blueprint, what does it mean there? Uh, we call it blueprint uh, as a national national plan, no, it's national action plan of mm. counterterrorism. Mm. In in national action plan, uh, we coordinate among more than 32 ministries and uh, government institutions. But the problem here is uh, there is lack of trust among ministries. There is a lack of trust among um, among government uh, institutions to a spot uh, to fight against terrorism or to prevent terrorism. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and um, um, but but you know one of the critiques that they're um, telling to uh, ASEAN is that uh, there was a little comprehension about the differences of capabilities of. ASEAN countries and the lack of technical and analytical uh, capabilities to address this uh, terrorism. What are your comments about that? Dr. Badrus? I think uh, we lost Dr. Badrus. Badrus, are you still there? Uh, um, there are critiques that uh, we are receiving that uh, there was a uh, little comprehension about the differing uh, capabilities of the ASEAN members and the lack of technical or analytical mm -hmm. capabilities to address terrorism. Mm -hmm. What are yeah. your comments about this? Yeah, uh, every uh, st ASEAN state members, they have a uh, different priority on counterterrorism. Uh, they have uh, their own uh, priority. For example, uh, uh, Myanmar, uh, they have uh, own uh, priority on, on some minority groups, including in uh, in Rakhine State, uh, Cambodia, Laos, and some and some uh, smaller states. Uh, I think they don't have a uh, uh, priority on the issue of counterterrorism. Uh, in the context of terrorism, I think uh, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, and and uh, Thailand are the most uh, important uh, countries who their their uh, citizens involved in or coordinate among among them on terrorism uh, right. that's that's uh, that's the issue in in Southeast Asia hmm. in ASEAN and and uh, and that's that's because of different priority they have different approach as well hmm. but the problem here is uh, for example uh, uh, terrorists uh, or or I Uyghur Uyghur who join uh, ISIS training or Eastern Mujahideen, Indonesian Eastern Mujahideen training, uh, they they join they use road from Cambodia to uh, Malaysia and then to Batam and then to uh, to Sulawesi to Central Sulawesi. It means that Southeast Asian uh, states actually they are uh, vulnerable as a road for many tourists. Uh, uh, to join some training or to join some fighting again including some there is a, a, a call ali Uyghur, uh, his name is ali he he used a route from cambodia uh, malaysia uh, and then to batam and jakarta and then they he, he want to join uh, to attack uh, in the surrounding jakarta area so that's right. that's that's how i think uh, asian state members should coordinate each other, although it's not priority on terrorism. Do, do you think that um, enacting uh, anti-terrorism laws are the um, solutions to end terrorism in the region? Yes, uh, for for make uh, equal, at least uh, equal or general or common a common agreement among ASEAN state members, uh, they should uh, uh, produce anti-terrorism law. Although the 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 content of anti-terrorism law will be different each other, but at least if they have uh, umbrella law umbre as an umbrella for managing uh, terrorism or, or preventing terrorism, I think that's that's a very important. Right, right, and uh, maybe for my last question, um, how do you see um, Southeast Asia uh, in the post-COVID era? Do you think uh, terrorists and um, violent extremists will still uh, threaten Southeast Asia? 
uh, yes, uh, there are still important uh, threat, security threat in Southeast Asia because uh, they are stronger after they return from Syria uh, and they are stronger after the pandemic. They uh, already established not only uh, militarily, they also currently they have a training home, they call it home training or, or in-house training uh, for fight against the government. And, and I think this threat is important for ASEAN state members to coordinate uh, more seriously, not only consider a pandemic, but also pandemic uh, also impact to terrorism as well. And, and secondly, uh, there are some local uh, organization in sources, ASEAN, not only in Indonesia, uh, Philippines, Malaysia, but also other regions who they coordinate each other as one ISIS in Southeast Asia. Uh, yes, there is Katiba Nusantara in Southeast Asia, but, but more than that, I think uh, they continue to coordinate each other to fight uh, against their own government. But they also coordinate each other uh, to, uh, to join uh, single fighting, including, for example, the, the Maute group. I think uh, many fighters from Southeast Asia joined Maute in, yeah, in, in Marawi. Uh, yeah, in Marawi. And, and including the, your question for the bombing of church in Jolo, uh, yeah. there is Jama'an Solidaulah too. There is uh, uh, women, and, uh, women and men. Or, right. uh, suicide bombers, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Jama'an Solidaulah contribute as the suicide bombers in, in, uh, in Jolo, in uh, Southern Philippines. Uh, I, I heard an uh, anecdote in, when I visit uh, prisons in, 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 in Indonesia, they say that why Indonesian, uh, why German Saudola contribute as you said bombers? Because uh, 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 Abu Sayyaf or, or Muslim in, in Southern Philippines, they, they don't have uh, enough, what it, uh, what it, uh, they don't have enough, they are not as brave as Indonesian fighters for as you said bombers. So that's right. that's uh, that's how how the capacity of Indonesia influence uh, Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. then, then, then maybe uh, how do we end this terrorism and violent extremism in in the region? I mean, it's um, getting bigger based on your predictions. Uh, yes. Uh, to to fight against them, we should use strategy, not only militarily, but more importantly, is uh, non militarily uh, should we should involve more ulama? We should involve more moderate groups to to join uh, to make a so-called counter narrative against extremism. And I don't when I visit uh, when I visit uh, Davao or some regions in southern Philippines, uh, schools schools in southern Philippines are still influenced by extremist group. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why don't Why don't uh, Philippine government invite uh, teachers uh, from Indonesia who come from uh, moderate groups to help teaching uh, Islamic studies based mm -hmm. on based on the the uh, very moderate uh, uh, comparative teaching of Islam. Uh, that's that's a two-state cooperation, and if if it it become uh, agreement among um, or common interest among association members or ASEAN members, I think it can become it, it can be a model of uh, teaching of Islamic studies who who uh, non violence and uh, and moderate. But but that's that's uh, still it. We already almost 20 years fight against terrorism, but there is no strategy such a strategy or to fight against terrorism. Right, right. Oh, those are interesting insights coming from you, uh, Dr. Badrus. So terima kasih sangat banyak teman baikku. Did I say it right? Thank yes, thank you. That's that's perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, maraming salamat.